Hey guys, it's Mike here. Happy New Year. I want to say thank you, first of all, for being a subscriber, for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. I will do my best in 2020 by providing useful technology and personal growth videos and help you guys achieve more results in your life. So this video has two sections. Uh, I want to share my thoughts and my opinion about technology and social skills that a good engineer uh, you know, needs to succeed in 2020 in this decade. Well, a lot of engineers, they don't have uh, good social skills and, uh, to work with others in team. And uh, that's a very, very serious issue. And unfortunately, uh, we see them everywhere. So basically, in general, if you want to work with people, uh, you need to be open minded. Uh, don't criticize people. Don't make them feel bad. Don't tell them you're wrong. I'm right. I have the solution. You might be right. But the way you convey this message should be very, very you know, in a, in a professional way and in a nice way. Uh, don't be that guy. Don't make people, you know, feel bad about the things that they don't know. Or sometimes we might be right about the technology and the other person, they might have a better solution for the problem. Always keep the options open. Uh, stay calm, uh, you know, be open-minded. Try to see the problem from their perspective. Maybe they are right because most of the time we as human as we are looking at the issue and usually our views are skewed and uh, we need you know, to interact and communicate with other people and genuinely be interested in, in them to learn about them and build a meaningful relationship. So this is the skill that you definitely always want to make sure you have it under your belt because it is very important, especially for people who are planning to become a manager or a leader or someone who wants to, you know, uh, be a product manager, product owner, wants to communicate with the customer. It's always about the communication, always about understanding other uh, people's opinion. So that's the first thing. Uh, people usually, they fit in three categories. I actually learned this from a book called Give and Take. The first category, uh, basically it's takers. Takers, uh, they always ask for help. They always need your help. And uh, when you help them, uh, basically they don't do anything in return. If you need help with anything, they're basically don't help you. And uh, that's okay, but that's their strategy. In long run, uh, they don't benefit much from this type of relationship. The second category is matchers. In, uh, in this category, people usually give you back exactly the amount that you gave them, right? So uh, for example, you help me with this project, I will, you know, uh, for example, handle the other part of the project. So it's kind of like exactly matching, uh, matching the give and take uh, equation. The last category, which is usually the most successful people you see around the globe, it's uh, basically people with giver's mindset. People who give without expecting anything in return. They genuinely want to uh, you know, help you achieve better results and grow as much as you can. So those people usually, they're uh, you know, some very, very successful people. They're usually good leaders and they're good managers and they're always successful. That's my personal opinion. And I, I really, really think that you guys uh, need to plan on you know, picking your strategy in work environment and building your uh, you know, a meaningful relationship and try to be a giver and help people achieve better results and you know, solve their problems. So the second part of this video is about technology. I really think cloud computing is going to be really big in this decade. And uh, we all need to invest time, energy, and effort to learn as much as we can about cloud computing. If you are a software engineer, but you're not familiar with how to scale a system, how to architect the database, how to pick the right technology for the tool, and how to put this all together, uh, it's probably a big um, negative point for you as a pro software engineer. So uh, learning about cloud computing, it's going to be really beneficial. Cloud is not going anywhere. Companies are inventing as fast as they can. And uh, that's because cloud unlocks a lot of opportunities for us to build and innovate faster than ever. Elasticity, agility, scaling, security, uh, monitoring, these are all the tools that uh, you will have access to in cloud computing. So Amazon Web Services by far is the leader in this industry, followed by Microsoft and Google. Uh, they all have great platform, but Amazon is my favorite. I'm not sponsored by the way right now. Uh, but I really, really think you guys should spend enough time and energy to get certified, to learn the platform, 
The second thing is going to be uh, machine learning and in general AI field. Uh, more specifically, uh, you know, become familiar with technologies like deep learning. Uh, learn a language that is very good for, uh, let's say, AI machine learning and deep learning like Python is my favorite. And of course, there's a lot of libraries like Keras, TensorFlow and things like that that you can use Amazon SageMaker to build data models and train the uh, you know, model and hopefully you, know, you build something useful and can offer your service to the world. As a good software engineer, you guys need to have a solid foundation in data structures in Alberta. Right. A lot of people say, oh, that was 20 years ago. I went to school and I was good at data structure, but now I don't need it. I'm just focused on architecture. Imagine a Google with, uh, you know, a bad big O notation, you know, a slow performance. You click and you have to wait 30 seconds. So nobody's going to use it. Right. So performance and making use of right data structure and algorithm uh, for specific scenario is very important. How to use trees, how to use graph, where to use hash map. So these are the things that you want to understand properly. Now let's start uh, from front end to back end. So if you're a front end developer, uh, you already know that JavaScript is not going anywhere. So um, for front end developers, if you want to become only focused on front end, uh, that's actually a great path because uh, now these days, uh, mobile applications, you know, different screen sizes and a lot of different complex options are out there. So companies are going to need always good front end engineers and uh, JavaScript at the core is going to be your biggest ability in web development, right? Become really, really good in JavaScript because that's a common language between all the technologies in front end. Uh, of course, there are libraries around that and, you know, frameworks around that like React, Angular, Vue, but I personally like React because of the, you know, advantages that uh, React provides. I'm not going to discuss this in detail in this video, but you guys can read about it and pick the framework that you're comfortable with. Uh, but become familiar with how to test your uh, uh, front end application like Jest, Jasmine, all the tools that it's going to help you automate and test your front end application. Of course, HTML, CSS, SCSS, these are the things, Bootstrap, these are the things that you're going to need as a front end uh, developer. So, the second part is uh, going to be a backend engineer. A backend engineers, they probably need to uh, become more familiar with the infrastructure side as well. So Java, Python, Node.js, Go is becoming really popular these days. So pick uh, two or three language, start with one and learn the concept, learn the algorithm and data structure, implement them, let's say, for example, using Python and pick a second language because these days companies expect you to have the pick the right tool for the job. For example, if you're building a non-blocking, uh, you know, application like chatting application, you might want to use, um, I don't know, Node.js. So you always want to have a good understanding about the uh, possible uh, solutions for a specific problem. That's a very important fact. And uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time learning one specific language without understanding about other technologies around that uh, programming language. And when it comes to solving a problem, companies always or people are always looking for more solutions that just the only specific, okay, I know Java and I'm going to implement this in Java. That's not probably the best answer uh, for you know today's problems. So as a uh, backend engineer, pick two, three uh, you know backend language and start working with them. Start building something with those languages. And of course, you want to have a good understanding about relational database and NoSQL databases. These days, key value or basically document type, uh, you know, NoSQL databases are very common to store user profile, to have uh, key value storage. Uh, become familiar with caching mechanism and how to uh, basically improve a user experience by, you know, adding a caching layer. Learn about auto scaling, learn about, you know, distributing traffic, uh, learn about how to mitigate like DDoS attacks. So these are the things that, uh, you know, they fit in architectural side of software engineer. Microservices are so popular these days. A lot of companies are trying to, you know, break their monolith application instead of deploying one huge application. They uh, start building smaller components that they are easier to build, to test, to deploy, to scale which for microservices, you're going to need uh, knowledge in Kubernetes and, and Docker. I will be recording a Kubernetes and Docker video and show you guys a real life example of how to basically uh, 
you know, build microservices using Docker and Kubernetes. So if you want to use Kubernetes in Amazon, for example, uh, you're going to need uh, knowledge in uh, EKS, ECS, or Fargate and how to deploy and manage a big application. Another category is DevOps, uh, basically engineers who help other programmers to deliver their features faster than ever to production. So we build uh, continuous delivery, continuous deployment pipelines where you commit your code, it goes through a bunch of tests, it goes through a bunch of stages, and then at the end, if it's high quality code, it goes to production. So this pipeline, it's gonna be continuously working and you're gonna deliver value to your customer. So these are the things that you really wanna spend time and learn about. It. Technologies, uh, you know, like Spinnaker, Kubernetes, and all the things that they're going to help you achieve CI/CD practice in your company and product. Before I actually end this video, I want you guys to think about a very important concept. In fact, this is the most important part of this video. Well, Jeff Bezos mentioned that he wanted to live a minimum regret life when. Uh, you want to retire, you want to look back, and you want to be fulfilled and satisfied with what you've done in life, in technology, in financing, whatever it is. Well, I want you guys to think about your retirement date. Uh, I read a book called The One Thing, and I really recommend this book. I'm not a sponsor, but uh, this book basically talks about a great concept. It says, imagine it's the you know last day of your life, and uh, you're thinking about all the things that you've done in life, and you look back. And there's one thing that you always want to be, you always want to become. There's always a big goal for, you know, every single person in this life. And it's all different. And that's the beauty of it. So find your thing, find your one thing and everything else is not important. And focus on that to achieve it because that's the one thing that you want to do in life. There should be a mission behind all these and, uh, and that's one thing. It's happiness, it's being fulfilled, it's being useful for community, for people, and you know making things better. So I wish you guys all the best. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.